Let's take a look at a flower fan light. 30 watt ceiling fan with light and it's dimbo, color temperature controlled and it's got a fan built in. And the reason I'm featuring this is because during our hot summer, the BBC and other organizations decided to run a little hate campaign against these. They're very common in other countries, less so in the UK. And their concern was that uh, they're very heavy, so they could strain the wiring. They've obviously never lifted a Tiffany uh, stained glass light shade because they are a concerning thing. But their other concern was that because they twist in operation, they're going to screw up all your wiring and then it's going to burst into flames and kill everybody. That was basically the gist of what they were saying. Anyway, before we start, we have to assemble this. We have to plug the fins in. Then I'll show you it working. Now, which way up do these go? It goes up this way. So I shall plug these in, trying not to snap them in the process. They'll probably be loud clicks. Oh, that does feel terrible, putting it in like that. Maybe it goes up the other way. Maybe I should read the instructions. I th would think the nice shiny blades go down the way. There it goes. It does go in that way. Oh, I'll just smack everything in the vicinity with this. Uh, really, I'd be better putting this into the ceiling first and then plug it in because, uh, or just dangling it because uh, it's quite fumbly. Once you've got these blades in, there's not much room. I'll tell you what, I'll put the other blades in, because otherwise I'm going to end up up here. And I'll plug it into the light fitting and we'll take a look at the modes. And then we'll take it apart, because that's what we're here for. So I'll go and give you a demonstration of that right now. So the fan is now installed. It's not dangling from a cable, though it's straight into a uh, ceiling socket. And we've got the remote control here. We can choose between the cold colour temperature that initially lights up, a warmer one, and this is actually a bit too warm looking on camera. It's not as orange as it looks. This is what you'd call typical warm room light, but it's a bit over rich. Um, so the next thing we can do, let's put it to a neutral white since it looks more acceptable. And then we've got the fan button with three speed settings. And it moves a fairly decent amount of air. faster and fastest but you can vary uh, the fan speed you can also turn just the fan on and off with this button here um, you can change the color temperature of the light uh, manually just by making it warmer or colder and it'll slide through them you've got a moonlight function which just basically goes into sort of nighttime mode um, and then you've got a dimmer which lets you dim the light down to your desired setting just across a range. Okay, now you've seen it running. Let's take it apart. Okay, now you've seen it in action. Let's explore. I kind of want to get this dome off. I, do, I think this might be quite destructive. The thing I really didn't like about that news article was that uh, this electrician had apparently... Uh, been told by some friends that they visited an elderly lady and uh, they were worried about the fact that she'd put a ceiling fan in herself, just screwing it into the lamp holder, and it was making a sort of knocking noise. Not sure what the knocking noise was, but apparently he went over and immediately removed it for the old lady, telling her how dangerous it was, and then quoted for installing a ceiling fan. You think, well, isn't that just drumming up business? Hmm. Anyway, let's see if we can get this off. Well, that's quite interesting construction. A uh, standard thread size of the look of it. There's the two colours of LEDs that are faded between two, give you your different colour temperatures. Right, let's uh, take some screws out this end. There is increasing competition between electricians for domestic work because a bit of a protection racket has been created by a marketing company. You may have heard of the NICEIC, the National Inspection Council for Electrical Installation Contractors, and it sounds like it's a government body, but it's really just a marketing company. I'm not impressed by them at all. I think they've done a lot of damage to the electrical industry. So this has a little connector in here. This is fairly common amongst these type lights. It means they can manufacture these base units and then they can uh, use a uh, a uh, little connector like this to choose between which uh, cap is going to go onto it. The spacing between the connections, you might think, is that not a bit close? I don't think it's really an issue because you find uh, many circuit boards that go on have very close spacing of connections as well, particularly the components on the board. 
Right. So what do we have here? The circuit board can be removed. There is a little three pin connector here. I'm going to put a red dot in that to show it was the one with the red. Although I should be able to work this out. <laughs> I am, uh, wonder if that's three phase motor driver here, perhaps made from discrete H bridges or something. And then there's this, mm, or is that the LED? I'm not really sure. Uh, let's take this out. Here is a screw. Poke that capacitor out the way. And we shall lift this circuit board out. So this is going into the motor, the one with the red dots. That is next to these little drivers. And the other connector is going straight down through the central core to the light. It would be interesting seeing what's in here. I don't know how destructive this is going to be. Well, let's take these screws out and find out. And then we'll take a closer look at the circuit board, which looks fairly complicated. That means that either I'll do a full reverse engineering if I can get in the mood for everything, uh, or I might just do a partial, a block diagram of the modules, which is kind of easier to digest, so to speak. So taking this off, what's this going to reveal? Uh, nothing much. Oh no, it has. It's revealed. It's revealed the motor. There we go. And it is a fairly typical multi-phase motor, but by the look of it, there's no feedback. So it is just effectively a low voltage three-phase motor here that uh, is just relying on uh, well, a synchronous motor effectively. Um, it's worth mentioning that this thing doesn't just suddenly ramp up to high speed. It does slowly ramp up. And then when you turn it off, it slowly ramps down again. Right, first thing. First, this big capacitor here looks quite spicy. Let's bridge that, just in case it holds a charge. Does it hold a charge? Did I even make a good connection there? Let's give it the finger test. Yes, that's it, discharge now. Okay, right, I shall fold that up to get a better picture, and we'll take a closer look at this. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete, and this is quite complex, so I have made two versions of this video. A short version, which I just basically give a description of the circuit board, and this longer version, which will then go into greater detail on all the different chips involved in uh, this circuitry. So, to start with, the supply comes in and it goes to the bridge rectifier via a 1 ohm fusible resistor. It also has a tap-off on the AC side of two 100k resistors heading over to a bit of a filter circuit and a voltage cap going to the microcontroller so that the microcontroller can tell when the uh, wall switch has been turned on and off. I didn't know that it had this feature. Maybe I should have read the instructions. I tried it and you can turn it on and off and it basically brings the light on, light off, light and fan, etc. And it lets you basically just control it without the remote control. It uh, provides it, it, uh, some smoothing to that supply with a huge 22 meg fired 400 volt capacitor. The reason it's so big is because it's powering the switch mode circuitry here, as well as two uh, lamp drivers. And the switch mode circuitry uh, has a, well, let me show you the data sheet for that. Let me just find the data sheet. There it is. Is this going to super glare out? It is to a degree, but not too badly. Let's... Uh, explore it alongside this. So it starts off, uh, there is the supply, and it's got a couple of the bootstrap resistors, that's these two resistors, 390k, that are charging up this capacitor, which is that capacitor there. And it's the usual arrangement, once it reaches a high enough voltage that capacitor, this chip starts, it starts pulsing the primary coil, and uh, then that uh, provides feedback through the feedback call that is echoed from the secondary. And that comes back via this diode and also goes through a potential divider here, which is based on this resistor and a couple in parallel hidden here. And uh, that then basically provides a supply of 22 volts. It's more than I was expecting. And you'll see why in a moment. Uh, there is a snubber network shown in this and thankfully they have included it here. So there's a snubber network. Excellent. That's one of the more complex bits of the circuit. Well, except for the microcontroller. Wow. Arm Cortex, no less. 
Anyway, so this is the Switchwood Power Supply, and it then has a 680 microfarad, 35 volt capacitor, and it produces a 22 volt supply for the fan primarily. So the fan is controlled by three of these little chips, which are just simply, let me grab the data sheet, dual MOSFETs, a uh, N-channel MOSFET and a P-channel MOSFET in each package. So for that reason, it can switch to the plus 22 volt rail or it can switch to the zero volt rail, but there is a very low value, 0.5 ohm, no, 0 0.05 ohm, uh, set current sense resistor, a little bit of feedback circuitry here. So the processor can actually monitor that. Now it's worthy of note, and this is complex. That 22 volt supply also goes to the microcontroller and you think, wow, that's pretty crazy. And I was hunting around looking for the uh, the voltage regulator. Then I saw this, which was a Zener diode, and I thought, that'll be it, but it's not. That Zener diode is just part of the uh, zero crossing, well, the, uh, the incoming AC supply detection circuitry. But in this chip, it has a voltage regulator, and from that it generates a 5 volt supply on this capacitor, which was also used to power the infrared circuitry. Uh, that also means this chip in standby runs at 65 degrees Celsius, because it is, although that's quite a low current, uh, it is having to regulate from 22 volts down to 5 volts with what's effectively a linear regulator. But the fact it does have a 22 volt reference means it can actually switch these MOSFETs up to the positive 22 volt rail and also to the zero volt rail to give the full toggling of the pair of MOSFETs inside. And that is basically a three phase drive for the motor. Variable frequency three-phase drive, thats it's very impressive. The other thing the microcontroller can do is it can control these two LED drivers that are driving two 50-volt arrays of LEDs. And these drivers are also powered from that one big capacitor. Now, that is the uh, bootstrap capacitor for that circuitry. The, I've removed the capacitor just to take this picture because it laid right across the circuitry and couldn't be stood up straight because of the way the pins had been soldered. In a way, that's good because it had been lifted up slightly so it didn't sit across these LED driver chips. Um, so they these chips have an inductor, they've got the uh, flyback diode, and then they've got the capacitor, and uh, that's ultimately it. They're controlled by a little diode uh, a resistor network from the microcontroller and uh, they have the current sense resistors 1.5 ohm each and also a 12k resistor uh, to set the over voltage detector that if they detect the output going over voltage uh, too much they'll actually turn themselves off very interesting right let's take a look at the schematic oh incidentally this microcontroller, I did find the data sheet for it. It is an ARM Cortex uh, Z Zero M, is it? M Zero, M Zero series. I could find the data sheet for it, but not this particular version of the chip, which seems to be a special niche var variation in that. It looks as though it may be specifically designed for driving things like, like motors. Okay, let's go to the schematic. I shall... Zoom down in this for a better view. It's a bit of a block view because we can look at the other bits uh, individually. So I'll just zoom in that now. Zoom. Here's the incoming supply. There's that one ohm fusible resistor. There's the bridge rectifier. And there's a little tap off via the two 100k resistors. And then it goes to a 5.1 volt zener, a capacitor and a 20k resistor just to basically keep it relatively low and also make sure that capacitor discharges quickly. And that provides a signal to the microcontroller so it can monitor if the main switch has been turned off even though it's getting a smooth supply from this. There's a big fat 22 microfarad 400 volt death beam capacitor that powers the whole circuitry. It uh, doesn't just power the LED drivers, but it also powers that switch mode power supply, which I've abbreviated here. The 22 volt supply it is isolated, but it's negative also comes back to the incoming supply negative as well. So the whole lot is reference to what could be called zero volts. It's not actual like zero volts with reference to ground. If you touched it, you'd probably get a shock. Uh, so it's zero volts of the circuitry. The 
22 volts goes to the microcontrol that generates its own 5 volt supply for its own internal circuitry. It also has the infrared detector powered from that 5 volt supply and with a little uh, pull up resistor and then a limiting resistor to the microcontroller so it can actually monitor the infrared signal. To control these uh, pair, three pairs of MOSFETs, I've only shown one here, it has a 51 ohm resistor going to each gate and uh, it can pull theoretically fully up to the 22 volt and it can drag it right down to a lower level below that. I'm not sure what's in here. It looks as though it's MOSFET drivers, but it can drive these MOSFETs on theoretically. No, because that the MOSFET wouldn't really be happy probably with over... 12 volt. Maybe it has an independent voltage source for these in, inside as well for the positive and the negative rail. But anyway, it can drive these MOSFETs on uh, one or the other, but not both at once because that is short the 24 volt, 22 volt supply. And there are three of those so it can sequence them to actually control the speed of the fan. Very interesting. With the current sensing abbreviated to little dot here because I realised it would have been too cluttered to add it in. Uh, the microcontroller also controls the LED drivers that get their own supply from the 350 volt smoothing capacitor and they've got a 1K and a 10K pull down again just to give it a nice decisive um, square wave for, from the microcontroller for pulses modulating the LED output. Anything else worth mentioning here? Yes, there is. The, I can show you the LED driver circuitry. It's fairly straightforward. It's a bright power chip. I'll probably have to zoom out again for this. I will have to zoom out again for this. One moment. And here's the bright power BP2956 series chips. Ignore the power supply circuitry here. That was already covered by that rectifier and the 22 microfarad capacitor. It basically has the usual arrangement that uh, it generates its own internal supply. Well, it runs directly from that supply, but does generate its own supply. It uh, pulses this inductor, and when it pulses the inductor, the magnetic field building up in the inductor limits the current flowing through the LEDs. Once it reaches a saturation point or a time point, it's got a 1.5 ohm resistor here for sensing the current from that. Um, once it does that, it shuts off, the magnetic field collapses, and then the polarity changes, and this goes positive, and it goes via this freewheel diode to the LEDs again, so it's a very efficient way of running it. It has a couple of other uh, resistors. It's got the 12K resistor going to zero volt rail for the resistor for the over voltage protect. What that does is if it detects a voltage cross here going too high, it uh, shuts the unit down because it knows the LEDs have failed and gone potentially open circuit and could be burning and arcing at that point. A spider just crawled by. Don't go in front of the camera spider. And don't drop down onto the... Oh, it's a huge spider as well. Excellent. Uh, spider may be about to make an appearance. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, it also has the pulse of modulation back from the microcontroller 1K resistor and then that 10K pull-down resistor. No, it's a way off. It's, it's way over to the power supply now. Excellent. That's quite a long-legged spider. Ugh, freaky. But there we have it. Uh, it looks like, I mean, it looks like a generic cheap Chinese product. Let me just grab it. But it contains lots of surprises. I mean, uh, the fact that it's, that microcontroller is driving a three-phase motor, driving the phases directly, and pulse of modulating two uh, colours of the LED lights and allowing the dimming up and down and doing soft ramping stuff. And it's also monitoring for the infrared signal. I mean, it's a fairly complex bit of circuitry. But there we have it. That's the screw-in uh, fan. Quite an interesting device to take apart.